In this video, my intention is to teach you how to do a dihybrid cross, which is a cross where you're looking at two different traits. Monohybrid crosses are keeping track of one particular trait, and you should be familiar with how to do simple Punnett squares with those. In these Punnett squares, we're going to be looking at two different traits, and these will be the larger Punnett squares, 16 cells total. The test cross we're going to do here is P's, and the traits that we're looking at for our P's uh, are going to be um, green P's and yellow P's. So the dominant trait is yellow, and the recessive trait is green. And the other trait we're looking at is seed shape, which the dominant trait is wrinkled, and the recessive trait is smooth. Both of our parents are going to be heterozygous for both of these, so that means our two parent plants are going to be capital Y, lowercase y, capital W, lowercase w. Now in order to get this cross, you have to figure out what the gametes are going to look like. And so I always remind people to think about the FOIL method that you learned in your algebra classes. FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, and last. And if you take a look here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate what I mean by those. So when we talk about the first, uh, we're talking about the first genes here. So the first two genes in each of these, we've got Y's and W's. So our first two genes are the ones that are bouncing up and down right now. And those are capital Y and capital W, which we're going to put across the top column. Remember, these are parents, and each parent can only give one of these genes to its offspring. But there's several combinations they could do. They could do big Y, big W that we just wrote down, or they could do big Y, little W, or little Y, big W, or little Y, little W. So <clears throat> the next one is outer. And so you're going to take the outer two genes, which are the ones bouncing right now, the Y and a little w, the capital Y and a little w, and those are going to go across the top of the second column. The inner two genes are little y, big w, which are going to go at the top of the next column. And the last genes then are little y, little w, which will go across the top of the next column. Now because both parents are the exact same genotype, they're both big Y, little Y, big W, little W, they're going to be the same for the other parent, but I'm still going to animate those. So we do the other parent, we got the first, big Y, B, W, we got the outer, big Y, little W, we have the inner, little Y, big W, and finally, lowercase y, lowercase w is our last gene, so that parent gets over here. Now these are your gamete cells. So when we talk about gametes, we're talking about egg cells and sperm cells. So these, these are just two traits. The sperm cells are, in, oh, I guess this case gets plants, so it's pollen cells. These pollen cells would have a big Y and a big W, or a big Y and a little W, or a big or a little Y and a big W, or a little Y and a little W. So the gamete cells only have one copy of these traits, because then when they merge together, the pollen and the egg cells, they will have now two copies of the genetic information, just like you're supposed to. So now the question is, is what goes in these blanks? Well, I'll let you give them a shot, and then I'm going to go here to the next one, and we'll fill these in. I'll unveil these uh, fairly quickly in this video. If you go down here, so we got big Y, big Y, big W, big W. So in this first cell right here is that. And then in the next cell down, there's two big Ys, and there's a big W and a little w. Since the order I gave the genes was Y followed by W, you always group them up Ys first, and then Ws. And then in every gene pair, you make sure that your capital letters are first and your lowercase letters are second. So in the third cell, you have big Y, little y, and two big Ws. And that's what we show here. And then finally, you have big Y, little y, big W, little w down here. And I'll unveil the next four. You should try these on your own, especially if you're in my class and you have the notes in front of you that you're trying to fill out. Now, as we go through these, what we next have to do is we have to look at the percentages. And so we have to be able to, to look at the genotypes and discover which ones are yellow and wrinkled, yellow and smooth, green and wrinkled, green and smooth. So for each one of these, Let's take a look at the genotype and find out if they are yellow or green or if they're wrinkled and smooth. So this first genotype right here. Um, 
let's determine what it is. Let's actually start off and let's do the yellow wrinkled. Let's find all the ones that are yellow and wrinkled. So to be yellow, you have to have at least one capital Y. And in order to be wrinkled, you have to have at least one capital W. So this one has a capital Y and a capital W. So this one is yellow and wrinkled. And what I like to do is I like to mark these out. And so uh, at the end, I'll count them up. And then the ones that are marked out, I don't have to recount anymore. This one has a capital Y and a lowercase w. So that's yellow and wrinkled. Capital Y, capital W. I think I said lowercase w on this last one, but it's capital W. So this one is yellow and wrinkled. This one is yellow and wrinkled. This one is yellow and wrinkled. This one is yellow, but it's not wrinkled. This one is yellow and wrinkled. Yellow, but not wrinkled. Yellow and wrinkled. Yellow and wrinkled. Not yellow. Not yellow. Yellow and wrinkled. Yellow, but not wrinkled. Not yellow. Not yellow. So the ones that I've marked... And if I'm doing these, I would usually mark them in such a way that I can't, that I can still see the genotypes. Uh, it looks like I have nine marks on here, so our chances of getting a yellow wrinkled P are nine sixteenths. Sorry, I made that delete. So now the ones that are marked, I don't have to go back and recount. I just recount the ones that aren't marked. And so the next one is yellow and smooth. So let's find our yellow smooth. This is yellow and smooth. So that's one. This is yellow and smooth. So that's two. Uh, not yellow. Not yellow. This one is yellow and smooth. Not yellow, not yellow. So I have three green ones. I notice I've marked them in a different way. Makes it easier to count if you come up with some kind of symbols. If you're marking on your paper, you could do like uh, triangles and then rectangles and circles or whatever, whatever it is. You could do uh, ones and then twos and then threes, however you want to count them up. So I've marked three. There's 16 chances because there's 16 cells. So there's three out of 16 chance to be yellow and smooth. Next, how many are green and wrinkled? Uh, these are two lowercase y's. The only way that you can possibly be green is if you have the recessive trait. So two lowercase y's. This is green and wrinkled. This is green and it has a capital W. So this is green and wrinkled. This is green and wrinkled. And this is green, but it's not wrinkled. It's smooth. And so our green and wrinkled totals is 3 out of 16. And then finally, the percentage that are green and smooth. I've only got one left. I don't even mark that one. I've got a 1 16th chance of getting a green and smooth P. So hopefully this helps you um, with doing your dihybrid crosses and working those out. And thank you for your attention.